While zombie films are in a bit of a lull right now, the mid-2010s were a hotbed of crazy zombie ideas. Thanks in no small part to Robert Kirkman's The Walking Dead. So with renewed interest in the genre, people were clamoring for the godfather of zombiedom himself, George Romero, to make his triumphant return. So you can imagine the excitement when in 2015 it was announced that Romero would be making a new entry in his zombie saga with the logline. The story is set on an island where zombie prisoners race cars in a modern-day coliseum for the entertainment of wealthy humans. Um, zombie drag racers? Uh, okay then, I guess they're going super literal with the title this time, because today on What the F*** Happened to This Unmade Horror Movie, we're taking a look at George A. Romero's Road of the Dead. Romero's zombie films have always played with the concept of the dead regaining some of their memories and actions from their previous life. It's why we have zombies handling guns and going to the mall. Their past life calls to them. He remembers. He remembers everything that he used to. But what writer Matt Berman wanted to do may have taken it a little too far. He was obsessed with the idea of zombies driving. Yes, you heard that right. His logic was that it was just a natural progression of what we've already seen that these zombies are capable of. His argument was that all of Land of the Dead was about Big Daddy and his group of zombies pursuing the truck Dead Reckoning all the way to Fiddler's Green. So why would they just stop? They should be following them all the way up to Alaska. And walking would just take way too much time. So Bourbon concocted the idea that they would instead drive vehicles, and therefore be able to pursue the crew of Dead Reckoning with ease. As someone who absolutely hates the idea of evolving zombies, and feel it should have stopped at Bub and Day of the Dead, this sounds absolutely atrocious. But okay, it's not my script, so let's go through this thing and give Road of the Dead a chance. Berman decided that he was going to start his movie on the final shot of Land of the Dead, with Dead Reckoning driving off as they set off fireworks and Big Daddy watches them drive off. Feeling that Big Daddy wouldn't just stop his pursuit, Berman contended that since he had already proven to use tools to get what he wanted in the name of pursuing these humans, Who's to say he wouldn't get behind the wheel of a car? Talk about making things complicated. And the complications just kept coming though, because despite this being a Land of the Dead sequel, they weren't able to bring back any characters from it. Hell, they couldn't even use the name Dead Reckoning when referring to the mobile zombie killing truck. This is because they were owned by Universal, while Berman and Ramiro were doing this outside of the studio system. That also meant that there would be no returning Simon Baker or Aja Argento. Their solution to this was to just kill off all but one of the remaining characters from Land. And that remaining character wouldn't even be named. So it's likely someone random, like this blonde lady. Now, this isn't a completely make or break moment because none of Ramiro's original trilogy featured the same characters from movie to movie. They were always different. So this wouldn't have exactly been outside of the norm. But it makes the decision to still follow the crew of the Dead Reckoning to be a very strange one. Why even follow them in the first place? Can't this just be a whole new story, just like the other films? Not to mention the fact that this decision makes Lan's Riley character look like an absolute idiot. He has a chance to kill these zombies, and he lets them go. You're just looking for a place to go. Same as us. In fact, Ramiro seems to even make a point to show that Big Daddy isn't interested in pursuing them anymore. So why on earth would they go after them? seems like a pretty big change. Either way, our lone survivor ends up on a remote island in Canada, 
that has successfully cut itself off from the zombie plague. The human race is flourishing again, and they're really starting to make a new world. You know, other than the fact that they have this crazy coliseum that they put the zombies in for entertainment. Think the cage from Land of the Dead turned up to 11. Given the vehicular entertainment, there's a lot more action here than your typical zombie fare. While the budget would prevent it from going full Mad Max Fury Road, it was certainly to be more than we had gotten in any of the other Dead films. Then there's the rich bigwig that's at the center of it all. He practically mirrors the Dennis Hopper character from Land, so it's one of many ways where the story feels very been there, done that. Not to mention the scientist who's trying to cure the zombies. Again, very been there, done that. But even with all of these changes to the standard zombie, one thing they made sure to avoid was having them run. While that may have been a popular trope since 28 Days Later and the Dawn of the Dead remake, Ramiro's zombies walked, and that was that. So at least Berman got that right. And remember Machete, Tom Savini's character from Dawn of the Dead that actually ended up showing up in Land? Well, he would have a role here, having followed along with Big Daddy all the way up to Canada. As much as I enjoyed the concept of bringing people back, Bringing back a zombie version of someone who's already considerably older than when we saw him last is a bit of a mixed bag. I mean, I love those Walt and Jesse cameos in Better Call Saul just as much as the rest of us, but I mean, they lookin' old. But this is George A. Ramiro's Road of the Dead after all, so when exactly does he get involved? I've mentioned Berman's name a lot, but not a lot of Ramiro. Well, after several of Berman's drafts, Ramiro wasn't a fan of the dialogue. He felt that it needed to be funnier. So he did a pass on it, adding in some jokes and aligning the dialogue more with what he himself considered to be good. Now, I'm not sure if you've seen many Ramiro zombie movies, but I wouldn't consider the dialogue to be exactly a strong point. Well, stop shopping. Anything you need right at your fingertips. Ramiro is more of a social commentator versus a witty linguist. So the fact that this is Ramiro's main contribution to the script is pretty concerning. And in a very strange turn of events, Ramiro attaching his name to the project ended up making it significantly harder to get the film made. Because while progress on the film was moving forward, George unfortunately entered poor health. Just two weeks before they were going to announce the film, Ramiro passed away. However, many people still wanted to make the film in an effort to pay respect to Ramiro's legacy. So the film wasn't completely screwed yet. But with Ramiro's name attached, it meant that those who were now in charge of this estate were now also in charge of approving what his name was on. And they didn't feel the script was up to snuff. Berman, feeling that the script was ready to go, and he didn't want to make sacrifices to appease Ramiro's estate, especially when George himself had already approved that script, so he refused. While I would have loved to have seen Ramiro enter the zombie void one last time before his passing, his last few entries proved that maybe it's better to just let the dead, well, remain dead. Because unfortunately, every entry has just taken a little of the shine off of those that came before it. Even as someone who enjoyed Diary, I can't pretend it's even a few levels within the brilliance of the original trilogy. With Ramiro having passed in 2017, progress on the project halted. And honestly, I'm not sure if that's a bad thing. As much as Berman makes this out to be that this is all about honoring Ramiro's legacy, that feels pretty disingenuine. Many elements of Road had already been done in both Diary and Survival. And as much as Berman likes to claim that this is the last thing George wanted to make, we already received his final dead entry in book form with the release of The Living Dead. And Ramiro did more than just a dialogue pass on that one. So if there was ever a proper way to continue George's legacy, Adapting the living dead seems to be the best option. 
because it has been both well liked by fans and had George contribute to it in a significant way, unlike Road. Berman claims that his movie will be made under the title Wolf Island, since he legally can't connect it to the of the dead world. So if this concept intrigues you, and I mean I really can't imagine why, then keep an eye out for that. Meanwhile, for the rest of us, we have the wonderful Dead series to look back on and enjoy for all its biting social commentary. Let's just ignore all the snake oil salesmen who came after the fact. What did you think of Road of the Dead? Do you think I'm being too harsh? Is there some potential that I'm just not seeing? Sound off in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one.